that you are doing now those who have the textbook and open it we have the poem in uh, ppt version but still you can open the po uh, poem in your book and keep your notes and pen ready by the side so welcome aloshia welcome to this uh, uh, new online prime class conducted okay. by dr premanand welcome you can begin now okay so good morning everyone uh, myself aloshia bizaiman i have been uh, working as an assistant professor uh, in ihrd college tamarshedi so today i'm going to deal with a poem uh, i think you're not Uh, very much popular with this poet that is leonard cohen have you uh, I, i don't think you have heard about him anyway uh, first of all i'll just introduce the poet and after that i'll give a small uh, introduction to the poem and then i'll uh, explain the poem okay that is how i'm going to deal with it i have divided uh, this whole session into three sections okay i think uh, you are all audible here so uh, directly uh, as you can see there uh, there is a slide i am your man uh, that is written by leonard cohen so in the next slide you can see that there is uh, leonard cohen he was born in the year 1934 and he died in the year 2016 so there is a i have pasted a picture of him there so you can see he is very young and he was a very charming poet so coming to his bi uh, biographical details you can see that he was a canadian singer a songwriter and a poet so uh, he was a singer first uh, by profession he was a singer he also wrote poems and basically he composed poems also so that is the title which which is uh, which he is famous now uh, i think students you have heard about uh, bob dylan so i think in your ways with words paper you have uh, you studied about bob dylan and there was a poem prescribed in your syllabus that is the times they are a changing so you know bob dylan was he won the nobel prize for literature in the year 2016 and he rejected that so that made him famous yeah so anyway uh, this man leonard cohen can be equated or can be seen uh, equal to this man that is uh, bob dylan so that is a small point that i'll give you now i'll directly get into the biographical details okay biographical details include uh, when he was born then his education then his school days adolescent eight days then coming to his um, what works famous works then once as bad etc etc so first i'll get into his family so this man belonged to an orthodox jewish family okay his mother was lithuanian and his father father was a polish guy so their parents his mother's and father's parents migrated to canada okay so then they settled there and then our poet was born at canada okay so that is all about his uh, birth okay so he was born in the year 1934 now coming to his uh, how he started to live and how he had this great passion and enthusiasm for song music poetry etc we'll just look into that okay now his mother his mother was a, the main person or his mother not only his mother both his parents that is his mother and father both encouraged him okay throughout his life they both encouraged him to pursue his interest in poetry as well as music okay now there is a mentor for this man okay his name that is a famous canadian author that is irving leighton after that you can see that he was influenced by popular poets that is all all will be familiar with w b eats right the famous man who has written dial of fitness free by sam gear second coming and all. so this man leonard cohen was influenced by w b eats and walt whitman so this both poets i am sure you you have heard about both this poet <clears throat> sorry okay <clears throat> now after that he had this interest or he had this deep passion for music and poetry and then uh, slowly he started to inculcate or slowly he started to imbibe that culture okay <clears throat> after that you can see that during his school days uh, this uh, passion triggered within himself and then moving to his adolescent age he he showed a keen interest to learn guitar you are all familiar with guitar right that instrument so <clears throat> 
he started to learn both acoustic as well as instrumental guitar and then <clears throat> there were lots of friends he had a lots of friends there around his area that is montreal so canada there is a province called montreal okay m o n t r e a l in that slide you can see <clears throat> the last point okay so uh, they, they all started to form a group okay they means this uh, some boys so they used to go to cafes they used to sing songs they used to play guitar sometimes there is a uh, there is an interesting point that is sometimes even cohen's mother used to accompany him to the cafe because uh, have you seen that is quite uh, strange right uh, the mother and the son going to cafes and singing anyway so this guy his mother was so much uh, you know uh, encouraging and she was there as a backbone for every uh, of his work or every of his songs so uh, they both went to the cafes and they uh, sang songs then they played instruments especially guitar and eventually they formed a group and that group is called buckskin boys okay is that clear buckskin boys so i think you can just uh, refer to that so next slide on the next slide you can see that uh, uh, an image <clears throat> that is an image of buckskin boys actually i have got that from facebook uh, if you want you can just uh, google or you can go to youtube and you can search for the songs and all there are so many songs composed by this boys you can just uh, when whenever you have free time you can just go and hear that anyway so that is the image of buckskin boys now moving on to the next slide so uh, that is all uh, about his family then about his background especially how that uh, you know passion for music and uh, that um, poetry came up and all now we'll get into the uh, i mean his works his first collection some of his works and uh, the themes that are uh, incorporated in his works okay the first thing so i think up to this much you are clear he was an uh, can I, i'll just sum up the uh, main key points he was a canadian singer he was a songwriter he was a poet so he is considered equal to bob dylan then he belonged to an orthodox jewish family his mother was lithuanian his father was polish then his mentor irving layton the famous canadian author then he was influenced by w b eats and walt whitman then his parents encouraged him both uh, of for the passion for poetry as well as uh, song or music okay so these were the points uh, also that buckskin boys also okay that the group they formed okay so these are the points that i discussed earlier now we'll move on uh, i think you are audible and uh, everything is all okay okay now uh, coming to his first collection okay his first collection was known as little scumbag mythologies that was written it in the year 1956 that is basically a poetry collection okay then some of his works i in, in that slide i think all are uh, visible some of his works i have mentioned some of his famous works there is poetry collection you can see novels also i'll just read that the spice box of the earth that is in 1961 and the poetry collections death of a lady's man 1978 flowers for hitler 1964 flowers uh, again that is repeated sorry for that now novels that is the favorite game uh, he has also written uh, i think quite a few number of uh, novels not many big not many but a few number okay novels that is the favorite game that is in the year 1963 and beautiful uh, losses losers okay that is 1966 now uh, so this man was starting uh, his career as a a poet as a poet and he wrote some poetry and novels but at at a juncture of his life at at a point he realized that poetry is not enough for him to earn money okay so during that time that is mainly during 1960s mid 1960s he realized our poet that is leonard cohen realized that poetry will not be sufficient for me i i don't think poetry will earn me lots and lots of money so better i'll go for uh, composing songs so at that time he started or he moved to compose songs 
so uh, that is how he started to compose songs so after that uh, he composed many a uh, poems and uh, sorry not poems songs and you can see that his first album the songs of leonard cohen that is in the year 1960 Seven. It was followed by three more albums of pop music songs from a room, songs of love and hate, a new skin for the old cinema. So uh, basically, after that, poetry he started to uh, concentrate, or he started to focus more on songs. Now, regarding the themes, you know, uh, we we all are uh, ardent listeners of music, right? Uh, we all listen to uh, quite uh, different genres of music: romantic, melody, sad music, folk, instrumental. So many kinds of music. So, what about the themes? The themes that are employed in our Leonard Bloom's poems. coming to the themes you can see that uh, this songs were abundant in uh, bound in themes of political and social justice so what is this political and social justice you know there will be so many kind of injustice that will be prevailing throughout the era during that time basically during 1960s at that time there were kind of uh, sexual assault men then kind of drug use and this man wrote against such kind of social injustice and this political injustice so he was a man who uh, you know tuliga chalipikya nokka parayille penne so ayala adu pole or aal ayirunnu okay this man now now coming to the awards that he has bagged uh see he actually has award uh, the companion of order of canada this companion of order of canada is actually the highest civilian award in canada so uh, uh, this man backed that award also he has won four canadian juno awards then prince of uh, i guess some some of some more awards he has backed but i haven't mentioned that in my slide anyway this is more or less about our poet so that's about our leonard cohen i think you all are hearing me uh, i think this is yeah this is it okay now we'll move, uh, uh, now i think everybody can just uh, i mean warm up because we have finished the first session okay good okay uh, since it is early morning some of you have just waken up you can just read that okay i'll just read it for you everything has a crack in it that is how the light gets in so i have just uh, this is nothing related to syllabus or something so just for an uh, you know uh, for a time bus i have just uh, posted it here this is a famous quote by leonard cohen and what is the meaning of it everything has a crack in it right so in this time you you know we are all going through a bad time that is corona virus and we are all locked uh, we are all shut in our homes we can't go anywhere we can't travel we can't even uh, go to any cafe and eat our favorite food so anyway you can just think uh, over this uh, court after this class okay so what is the meaning everything has a crack in it that is how the light gets in so what is the meaning of that yeah uh, for the light light to get in there will be a crack so what does that mean that means that every everywhere or every time you will have some bad times you must uh, you know everybody has trials and tribulations in your life and you must uh, go on okay don't look to the negative side of your life always look for the positive side don't be optimistic always be yeah don't be no so i'm sorry always be optimistic okay you always look to the positive side of your life okay so i think my boring session uh, would be uh, I, i i think i have added some colors to my session so anyway you can all uh, relax now uh, now okay can i just move on to the next i mean the poem that is the main essence or the main session okay now again so i have just uh, posted leonard cohen along with that this is uh, the album cover okay of the song i am your man by leonard cohen so what is this i am your man uh, i am your man you have heard especially uh, uh, the children those who are listening to my session what is this i am your man yeah just think about it this is an expression where do you use this expression i am your man i am your woman i am your i am your boy where do you use that 
So you can just think to which genre this song or this I'm your man belongs to. Yeah, this is a romantic song. Okay, this is a very romantic song. Here you can see that there is a lover and there is a beloved, and uh, they are both um, being addressed. This man, the lover, is speaking to his beloved, and there are instances. And okay, throughout the poem, uh, when we are dealing with the poem, I'll discuss that. Now, I'll just say something about our poem. Brief points about our poem. Okay, sir, can you just show the next slide? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm Your Man was first released in February 1988. So that is, I don't think that is very relevant. Anyway, you can note down that. And it was ranked on 51 on Pitchfork's list of the 100 best albums of 1980s. So during that time, that is 1980s, this song was ranked as 51. Pitchfork's list is a list which is uh, there in Canada. So uh, like we all have uh, our list, right? So in that, uh, Pitchfork's list is one of the popular and famous. So uh, that list plays songs uh, and they will rank the songs. Okay. You don't find any kind of big pentameter or any tetrameter. No, nothing of that sort. It is free words and in asymmetrical stanzas. Okay, there is no symmetry or something. Okay. Now, the poem describes, what is the poem describing or what is there inside the poem? What is the theme? Here you can see that I already told there is frustration, there is desperation on the side of, uh, on the side of lover. Also, you see the poem describes the lover's willingness to take on any role in order to please the beloved. So here you can see that the lover, our Leonard Cohen's love, uh, whoever may be the lover, the lover is standing like he is very sublime. He is standing there and he is pleading. In a kind, he is begging to the lover. I am there for you. I can go down uh, at to any extent. So that is how you can see, that is how the poem is being delivered. Okay. Now, he regrets the promises. So there is some uh, flashback. We don't know what is that. Anyway, some promises have been, uh, have, have not the lover. And he regrets or he repents for that. Okay. And now he is ready to uh, make whatever kind of sacrifices or whatever kind of amendments. Okay. Now, and he is hoping that this beloved, our girl, will forgive him, and he is ready to stoop as low as he could, as possible, as he possibly could. That is, talagunikyan. I'm already party at it. Yes, talagunichitil orikelu, kunikyugulini orikelu. So, adu bolle alla. Adan naane kunikilla naane parayinda le. Naane inda thala arde monil kunikilla naane parayinda. Pakshe ivade the situation or the plight of our anyway we don't know what 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 was the flashback and i don't know so anyway this man is ready to stoop as low as uh, he possibly could because uh, he he desperately or he is longing for the love or the union of his lover now, the last point about the poem is that the poem is drawn with erotic imagery. Coming to the stylistic features, stylistic features, the one I'm already parno, it is free words, asymmetrical stanzas. Coming to the imageries, you can see that symbolism under imageries, there are erotic imageries. What is this erotic imagery? Yeah, sensual or uh, something related.